Okay, welcome back after the break. Uh, just before the break, we were um, looking at uh, the incarnation, studying uh, the incarnation of Jesus Christ. We, look, we looked at uh, the seven steps in the incarnation in Philippians chapter 2. Uh, we look at um, uh, two more scripture passages that talk about the incarnation. Uh, one is uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. So can one of you please read um, 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 please? And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. Thank you. So here, uh, in a very uh, short way, you know, uh, Paul is writing to Timothy in the churches at Ephesus, and he's talking about, uh, you know, this great mystery of godliness. What is the mystery? Uh, what's the meaning of mystery? Yes, mystery is something that is hidden, okay, and now is, uh, you know, has now been made known or is brought to light, there's clarity, people can see it, understand it. So he's talking about the mystery of godliness, uh, which means uh, mystery of godliness is, you know, Jesus Christ manifested in the flesh. The mystery of godliness here Paul is referring to is the manifestation in the flesh. And he says, this mystery is was hidden in the ages past, it was not known, it was not revealed. But, you know, in, in God's appointed time, uh, it is made known, it is revealed. And how is it made known and revealed is, uh, you know, Paul is saying, we have seen it. You know, we've seen it. Um, uh, you know, he, uh, Christ Jesus was even seen by angels. He's talking about when, when Jesus was ministered to, when was Jesus ministered to by angels? In the Garden of Gethsemane and after temptation as well. Thank you. So he was ministered to by angels. He was manifest in the flesh. That means we've seen him, known him. People spoke to him, touched him, felt him, experienced his touch. And, um, and now he's even preached among the Gentiles. Jesus even preached not just to the Jews, but he also spoke to the Gentiles. Now he's being spoken to the Gentiles, being preached to the Gentiles because Paul has been given that commission, that command to go and take the gospel and to preach to the Gentiles. And he was believed, you know, uh, by people and people have also seen him go going up in glory. Okay, his ascension, 500 people witnessed that, has seen it. Okay, so what was hidden was not known uh, in the Old Testament. Why was it a mystery? Because in the Old Testament, we know that, you know, uh, people did not have the Bible or the Torah like in our, in our like we have the Bible in our hands. It was only among a very privileged few. They had the Torah who people could read it. And only if they could stand up and read it to the people, that's when the common people could hear it but we are so privileged we have the bible in our hands we have different versions we have youtube filled with uh, sermon messages we have um, google anything you type anything you want to know everything is accessible wealth of knowledge but it was a mystery to them about the second person of the trinity but was manifested and made known in the person and the work of jesus christ and jesus lived here on this earth people have seen him known him you know, and have started speaking about him, recording the events. And uh, he says, now that mystery is made evident. And one way it's made evident is, is manifested in the flesh. Okay. So um, 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 teaches us about incarnation. Uh, you know, uh, the eternal God who existed even before the foundations of the world in a certain time in history has made himself known even as he was unknown to the world people could not understand god you know they did not know god even though god manifested himself in various ways in the old testament they did not have a full understanding about the nature the character and the attributes of god but you know he's made known in the flesh now and people are able to see understand and know uh, god and his nature and his way of doing Things. The other verse is Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. So can somebody read Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, please? Okay. 
Thank you. So here in the incarnation, Emmanuel, which is uh, deity becoming humanity, God with us, uh, God with us in a very tangible way. Tangible means what? In a very? Huh? In a very real way, in a very physical way, a very obvious way, in a way that we can see, touch, experience, and know God was with men as a man. Okay, God was with men not as God, who we could not see, touch, and God was with men as man. Okay, so uh, was fully man and was fully God. Okay, so from our discussion so far, uh, uh, we have made these following observations. God revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, since God is unchangeable, uh, you know, but Christ is the full and complete revelation of God, and there is no more need for a revelation. So if somebody says, hey, you know, God has revealed to me a new mystery, it has to be something that is already given in the Word because everything that God has revealed to us is complete, is done, is revealed to us in the person and work of Jesus Christ and here in his in his book. So if he's saying that is something, a new revelation or a new mystery, then it's a big question mark because everything, you know, um, God has revealed to us. There's no more uh, revelations that are required. What we really require is clarity to know the revelations and the truth and to understand and we don't have to worry about that because we have the third person of the trinity who is the holy spirit who will uh, lead us into all truth who will help us to understand the truth just like jesus uh, said okay in john chapter 14 and 16 in the incarnation god came to be with man even though he became fully man he did not cease to be god which means he cease means he did not stop to become God, he was fully God, he was fully man, 100% God, 100% man, all God and all man, okay? Incarnation is not uh, about a man becoming a God through some mystical experiences or to draining divine enlightenment. Like many of them, many men have become God men, okay, a God man, okay, through enlightenment. We have... Uh, various uh, people in history, uh, we read, okay, because, um, uh, uh, you know, we read that they attained enlightenment, they became God, but this, we are, when we're talking about Christ's incarnation, we are not talking about man uh, becoming God or attaining through a mystical experience or through enli divine enlightenment enlightenment no it was god and man coexisting uh, in the fullest sense in the person of jesus christ did you understand that yes so it was not god become man becoming god through some you know through mystical experiences to just you know spending time on the mountain uh, spending days fasting and prayer and then becoming god receiving enlightenment no like some people have it's not that it is here god becoming man so the incarnation, God became man in totality, in body, soul, and spirit. And um, his humanity was real and was total. Okay. So these are some of the truths or some of the observations that we made through what we studied about uh, Christ's incarnation. Any questions? Before we move on to the humanity of Christ. Yes, Sean. Can you please take the mic? Yeah. Uh, ma'am. So when Jesus went up uh, the mountain with um, uh, Peter and um, John, mm -hmm. right? so when he went up there and when he became a dazzling light, is, did he take back his uh, di divinity and sovereignty in that moment? Is that why he became uh, like that? He was transfigured. Yes, he was transfigured, yes. Yeah, so he was transfigured. He was okay. no longer, he was transfigured into the sun so that he could... So that means he took back all that he laid aside. He was just deity that time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now because we talked about like he, he put it all aside, he can he can use it at any time, but he didn't do that. So I thought at that moment he did. So he transfigured. Why. It's a good question. I never thought of it, Sean, but uh, I can uh, do some study on that. But then when he says he's just transfigured, 
you know he was uh, he was no longer as a human yes so good question though good yeah anyone else has any questions okay if not we'll move on to chapter 6 okay the humanity of jesus christ okay uh, in this chapter chapter 6 we will study about the humanity of christ uh, we'll see how Christ was human in all areas uh, and, uh, you know, he, how he confined himself to the weaknesses, frailties, the limitations of a human being in every way. When we say that Jesus was human in every way, but except in his sinlessness, okay? That's very, very important. Jesus was human in every way except that he was sinless very important except that he was um, sinless he was truly human and um, we look at uh, you know the humanity of uh, jesus christ okay so why was it necessary for um, uh, you know jesus to become a human being anyone like to answer why was it necessary for jesus to become a human being sean uh we, I mean, we always, I mean, God always gives instructions as to how to live, and how to know, obey, how to follow his rules and commandments. But most people are finding it difficult to follow it. So uh, what best way to get people to understand than to lead by example? Mm -hmm. So I think that's the reason why Jesus came, in order to lead by example, to show that, yes, I have come as a human. If I can do it, then you can do it too. Well said. Very good. Thank you. Yes. You know, uh, the the... Old Testament laws, the people were finding it so binding and so, uh, you know, kind of crushing them. And they were like, what is this laws, laws, so many rituals, so many things. It was it was becoming so difficult for them. And it was, uh, they were at one point just doing all of these rituals, you know, going to the temple, offering sacrifices. Even the sacrifices that they were doing, they were not following, you know, what God had asked them to do. So it was not out of their heart. It was not out of their love for God. It was just because they don't want to incur the wrath of uh, God. So there was no deep sense of relationship. Um, but when, um, when Christ and, you know, they found it that, they found this God was, you know, so holy, he wants us to be holy like him. It's so difficult to meet his standards of living and keep all these laws. But when Jesus came and he lived and he showed us, he set us an example. Yes. Good. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Take the mic, please. Yeah. Ma'am, uh, for us, we did sin and all like, for that, there is no perfect sacrifice. Because if we sacrifice goat and all, we can't save. But Jesus became sacrifice for us, and uh, he sh he showed uh, how value uh, us for God. Yes. So he sacrificed for us, and he came as a uh, he came as an example to show us to how to live life in godly manner. Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, he became a substitute in our place substitutionary work of God uh, we had to die but he took our uh, place so in that sense he identified with the sins of the mankind he even though he was sinless he took on the sins of mankind he identified with us in that way he substituted uh, in our place he took our place and he died on the cross for our sins anyone else yes uh, ma'am so when you look at the old testament can we say that you know when people were following God's laws and commands that it was more than in love was it out of fear? When they were following God's commands, they were doing it out of in the, more than more than love, it was more out of fear they were yes. following. Yes, they were doing it. That's why God says, "Look at the sacrifices you're bringing. Try taking it to your governor. I think it's Haggai or Malachi. You know, you're giving um, you know lame and blemished animals." Uh, take it to your governor, would he accept your sacrifice? Then how can you bring it to God? And he says, you know, shut the door of your tem the temple because your worship is like noise to my ears. That is what I think he says in ha the book of Haggai or Malachi. So Jesus says, I'm not pleased with your sacrifices. And then that's why he says, you know, I'll remove your heart of stone, give your heart of flesh, I'll write my laws upon your heart and mind. I put my spirit and my spirit will cause you to keep my laws and 
commands. Yes. So Christ's humanity was a basis for uh, you know uh, God to reveal Himself to mankind. Okay. Uh, he also talked about the substitutionary work of how He identified with us, and also like Sean and um, Vimal. Vimal said, you know. Uh, 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 Okay, sorry, we had lost, I lost connection and I'm back now. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, we'll continue with our class. Um, yeah. Okay, so, you know, uh, we were talking about, um, we're trying to answer the question, you know, wh wh why was it necessary for Jesus to become a human being? So because he was able to, you know, he became, he became a human being, we were able to understand God, uh, we can know how he lived, uh, and we can live as he lives, and, uh, you know, works that he did, we can also do, it gives us the encouragement, it gives us the strength and the boldness. So we look at a couple of scripture passages that talk about, um, uh, the humanity of Christ and try to understand his humanity. Okay. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. Can somebody read that, please? Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. Okay. So here, the first step of Christ's becoming a human, we see that he was born of a woman. Uh, this phrase, uh, born of a woman, uh, means that he was human, just like we all are human. It, it, it describes his human origin, his weaknesses, his frailty. Uh, just imagine how this eternal God, you know, who can, uh, who's so great, who's so awesome, who's all powerful, you know, just confining himself, subjecting himself to the physiological process of, you know, being developed in the womb of uh, being born in this earth, you know, process of childbirth, infancy, growth, um, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, um, growing up into adulthood. So you just see how much, uh, you know, God did to limit himself uh, so that he can understand us, so he can be one among us, so he can take our place and he can be our mediator and our high priest. So even as we live our lives, you know, we face different challenges, we go through difficulties and problems, and sometimes we think nobody loves us, nobody understands us, nobody knows what we are going through, but we need to know that God became man. When he limited himself to all of these physiological uh, processes, um, uh, you know, it just gives us this whole uh, assurance that, you know, he identifies, he knows us, he sees us, and he knows our pains, our difficulties. And when we go to him, we share with him, you know, he can help us um, out. Okay. Uh, so Jesus was human. Uh, humanity can be, uh, could uh, be seen in, in different ways. Uh, physiologically, you know, he grew up. There are scripture passages that talk about, you know, how he was a child, was taken, and he grew up, and how he went to the temple, and all of those things. Intellectually, we see that he increased in wisdom. 
uh, Luke chapter 2 verse 52 says he increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. We also see that he thirsted. When did he thirst? Uh, when he fasted. Okay, he was hungry that time. When was he thirsty? On the cross, Jesus said, uh, I thirst. When else was he thirsty? Yes, Samaritan woman. Remember the Samaritan woman? Uh, he sat at the well and he was thirsty and asked for a drink. Was he hungry? When? Some of you are hungry now. <laughs> when was he hungry? After he fasted for 40 days? Uh, Jesus said in Luke chapter 4, verse 2, uh, he was hungry. Um, okay, when um, when else was he hungry? Lord's Supper, was he hungry? <laughs> in Matthew chapter 21, verse 18, before he cursed the fig tree, you know, Jesus was hungry. Remember? Yes. Okay, he felt pain. Did he feel? Did he feel pain? Hebrews five eight. Can somebody read that, please? Hebrews five eight. We pass the mic to somebody who wants to read Hebrews five eight. I think we should have two mics. One this side, one this side, so it, it helps. Give it to him. Uh, Hebrews five eight, please. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered yeah, he learned obedience to things that he suffered so we think that only sometimes we go through all the suffering but even jesus uh, suffered okay uh, he also expressed compassion did he express compassion yes various scripture passages it says he was moved with compassion he healed the people you know when he saw the uh, the widow with this, uh, his the dead son you know going the funeral pyre going he was moved with compassion he he raised the son back to life so the various places where we read that jesus uh, had compassion he was moved with compassion uh, he expressed joy can you read the, the john chapter 15 verse 11 please 15 verse 11 <coughs> John chapter 15 verse 11 15 verse 11 yes these things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full yes so he had a joy and he wanted that joy to remain in each one of us okay he expressed anger did he express anger yes when did he express anger when he cleaned the temple, when else? One minute. Okay. One minute, Sean. Ah. Yes, clean, uh, Jesus cleaning, uh, cleansing the temple, okay. Please use the mic. Okay. When he came down to the mountain with John and Peter, okay. Oh, the yeah. Who is the greatest? Yeah. No. No. Who is the greatest? Uh, when they were actually trying to drive out a demon from a boy, okay. Jesus was angry with them because they were not able to do it. Okay. But, because uh, of their unbelief. Yes. yes. Somebody already said that. Okay. The Pharisees, you brood of vipers. Okay, uh, specifically when was he angry, uh, Mark chapter 3 verse 5, when he entered the synagogue and there was a man with a withered hand and um, the Pharisees and Sadducees were watching Jesus closely if he will heal on the Sabbath and Jesus knowing what was there in their mind, he asked them, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or evil, to save life or kill it and uh, all of them remained silent and then he looked around with anger. Why? Because... You know, these people were so hard in their heart. They didn't want this man with the wither hand to, you know, be well and whole. They were so holding on to the law that they should not do anything on the Sabbath. They were so grieved at their hardness of heart. And he looked around and so angrily at them. 
and then he told that man with the withered hand, stretch out your hand. Mark chapter 3 verse 5. It's given in your notes. Mark chapter 3 verse 5. Did he express sorrow? Then? <laughs> Very smart. Yes. Matthew chapter 26, garden of? Garden of? Gethsemane, yes, you know, um, his sweat was like blood drops, okay. Uh, when uh, Lazarus died, he expressed sorrow, yes, Jesus wept, okay. Did he express loneliness? When? On the cross, okay, actually it says here Matthew 27 verse 38, but I would say Matthew 27 verse 46, when Jesus said, Father, why have you forsaken me? Okay, Matthew 27 in your notes, it says Matthew 27, 38, but Matthew 27, 46, you can. Was he tempted? Yes. Uh, where do we read the temptation? Matthew chapter 4. Okay, uh, verses 1 to 11, Hebrews 4, 15 also talks about his temptation. Yes, Sean. Can we take uh, John 17, verse 5 as loneliness? John 17, verse 5. Uh, we just talked about, uh, about uh, he's asked for Father, give me glory in your presence. No, no, it's not talking about loneliness, no. Because he was always with the Father, right? He was intimate with the Father, he was close to the Father. Okay. So we see that in every way, Jesus was uh, human. His humanity could be seen in every way. Uh, we also see that um, he was not only born of a woman, but he was also, you know, uh, had uh, the descendants, you know, his lineage, his ancestry was very much human. A descendant of David, Romans chapter 1, verse 3. It's in your notes. Can somebody read that? Romans chapter 1, verse 3. It's in your notes. You can just read it. Descendant of David. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David, according to the flesh. Yes, so here uh, Paul is, um, you know, trying to affirm that Jesus Christ is, um, is uh, human. He's also God. He's saying he was, um, you know, born of the seed of David. Seed of David means what? Seed means what? generations okay ancestry okay here yeah, uh, he, he which means he had a natural lineage okay uh, we also read in romans chapter 9 verses 4 and 5 here paul uh, can somebody read that romans 9 verses 4 and 5 13 the Adoption, glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God, and the promises. Okay, the amen, thank you. So uh, here Paul is stating that, um, one minute, I lost my... Sorry. Okay. Um, so here, uh, Paul is talking about uh, you know the Israelites. Uh, they were adopted as um, uh, as you know the chosen race, uh, sons and daughters of God. God revealed his glory to them he gave them his covenants he gave them the law he gave them uh the promises the service of god means they were also priests who were serving god um and also they had the fathers talking about uh abraham isaac and jacob we are I, i'm actually explaining romans 9 verses 4 and 5 and says and whom according to flesh christ came also which means he's talking about the israelites as a chosen race Okay, he says, hey, you are, you have, you're adopted as sons and daughters, you're the chosen people of God, you were given the covenants, the laws, the, uh, you know, the, the, the opportunity to serve God, the promises, and in your, and you also had the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and in your uh, generation, in your race came Jesus Christ in the flesh. 
okay so uh, christ who came who was overall eternally blessed god so god who became man came in the natural lineage of the jews he was a jew by race he was an israelite from the nation of uh, israel okay and also we have heard and seen and handled 1 john chapter 1 verses 1 to 3 uh, we've already read this okay um that which was from the beginning uh sorry not uh, not john chapter 1 verses 1 to 3 this is 1 john chapter 1 verses 1 to 3 so can somebody read this please 1 john is there in your notes you just take the mic and read it that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life the life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the father and was manifested to us that which we have seen and heard we declare to you that you may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus christ so see the apostles testimony here he's saying uh, can you pass the mic so somebody else can read it yeah uh, so here we are seeing that from the beginning we have heard so he's saying that we have heard jesus we have seen with our eyes we have touched him with our hands you know concerning the word of life the word of life here is talking again capital w is talking about jesus you know his life was manifested means made very evident we have seen we are people who bear witness to all that he has spoken done we've been with him we have lived with him you know um and that is what we declare to you okay so the son of god was seen heard looked touched by mankind he was uh, he had people who related to him he could be seen people who spoke to him he was very real he was in flesh and blood okay first timothy chapter 2 verse 5 first timothy chapter 2 verse 5 for there is one god and one mediator between god and man the man jesus christ thank you it's talking about um, uh, the mediator between god and man and who is this mediator between man and god and man it says the man christ jesus it's not saying the god christ jesus it's saying the man christ jesus so as a man christ jesus you know he's doing uh, he's a mediator he has a mediatorial role and he uh, which means that as a mediator he was a true representative of the human race before the father which means you know he was a bridge between god and man and man and god he was a bridge between the father and humanity and as a man he was able to you know mediate between god and man um, and he was the only man who could do so uh, uh you know he was the only man who could medi be the mediator between god and man and um, you know because of him all of us you know uh, no matter who we are where we are we can approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and truth and forgiveness and grace at a time of need okay so it was god who was reaching down to mankind in Christ Jesus and also uh, you know uh, it was also God who was as a man who was reaching back to God so it was God and men reconciling uh, 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 or you know we being reconciled through the man Jesus Christ we being reconciled back to God through the man jesus christ okay we are received reconciliation or we are recon reconciled back to god because of what jesus christ did on the cross for uh, us and because he was the mediator between god and man and man and god you know he also made a way for us to approach god okay when he died you know the curtain of the temple tore into two halves and we have the uh, now access to enter the holy of holy okay so we don't need anyone to go through we can just go directly to uh, the father because of jesus christ okay um he was also a man approved by god acts chapter 2 verse 22 so can somebody read acts chapter 2 verse 22 please men of israel 
Hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst, as you yourself also know. Okay, so here in Acts chapter two, verse twenty-two, it reveals an important truth about Christ's humanity. Um, we'll see that the miracle, uh, you know, uh, ministry of Jesus Christ was linked to his humanity. Okay, so we see here that, you know, uh, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God, okay, who did signs, miracles, and wonders. So Jesus did mighty miracles, you know, as a man, being human, uh, with all the human limitations, with all the human weaknesses and frailties of a human being, yet he was able to do mighty signs, miracles, and uh, wonders. Okay, uh, so Jesus was a man and through the power of the Holy Spirit, he was able to do signs, miracles and wonders. And we see that Jesus never attributes his miracles to his deity. He always, um, you know, attributes it to the anointing or the work of the Holy Spirit. Look at what he says in Luke chapter four, verses 18 and 19, the beginning of his ministry. Uh, you know, when Jesus goes to the temple, he reads um, the prophecy in, uh, in Isaiah. We already read this. And he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Okay. And he declared that the Holy Spirit was upon him because God has anointed him to preach the good news, to set the captives uh, free, to set the prisoners uh, free. Okay. So we see that he says it is the power of the Holy Spirit, the anointing that is in him, that he's able to do these miracles. Look at what he says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 28, when he casts out demons. What does Jesus say when he casts out demons? He did it to the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, Matthew chapter 12, verse 28, he says, But if it is by the Spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Okay, and he also did miracles, uh, uh, signs, uh, and wonders, not of him being deity, but because, you know, he was fully human. He says this in John chapter 5, verse 36. Uh, can somebody read John chapter 5 verse 36 and somebody else can read John chapter 10 verses 24 and 25. He says these signs and miracles that he's doing is not because of him being deity but because of him being sent by the Father. John chapter 5 verse 36, can somebody read that please? John 5 36, but I have a greater witness than John's for the works which the Father has given to me finish to finish the very works that i do bear witness of me that the fathers has sent me so he's he's testifying to the works he's saying the very works that he does testifies of the that the father has sent him john 10 24 and 25 <coughs> then the G, uh, then the jews surrounded him and said to him how long do you keep us in doubt if you are the christ tell us plainly jesus answered them I told you and you do not believe the works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. Yes, the works I do in my father's name testify about me. Okay. And also he spoke about the indwelling presence of the father in John chapter 14, verses 10 and 11. He says, don't you believe that I am in the father and the father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who's doing his work. Okay, so here he's attesting that it is the Father who is in him, you know, who is helping him, who's giving him the authority uh, to speak and uh, asking him to speak what he has to uh, speak. And we also see that the apostles recognized this fact uh, that, you know, Jesus did uh, all of his signs, miracles, and wonders uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit. A very famous verse uh, in Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Can somebody read Acts 10, 38, please? Acts 10, 38. 10, 38. Yes. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were uh, oppressed 
why the devil for god was with him yes so very important verse underline that you know how did how do we know that jesus did all the signs miracles and wonders the power of the holy spirit uh, you know um, we see here the apostle is saying that you know god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy spirit and power and he went around doing good healing all who were under the power of the devil because god was with him okay and also we see that prior to his ascension jesus you know um, gave this power to his disciples uh, we read this in acts chapter 1 verse 8 but here the reference given is john chapter 20 verses 21 and 22 when jesus uh, rose again he came and all of the disciples were scared they were huddled in a room with all the windows and doors closed jesus disappeared before them and then you know he said he breathed on them and he said receive the holy spirit but it's actually here their uh, born again experience what happens in John chapter 20, verse 21 and 22 is their born again experience when Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit. But actually in uh, in other passages, when we read after that, you know, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus tells them, you wait, you will receive, you will be clothed with power, endured with power from on high, and uh, you will be my witnesses. Okay, so that you can put Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Okay, so we see that, uh, and it's important to understand that when Jesus walked, on the earth he was fully human being he did every, he did every sign and miracle um uh, through the empowering work of the holy spirit um and uh, you know when he ascended to the father you know the father sent the holy spirit who empowers us to do the miraculous works that we are uh, doing okay we also look at hebrews chapter 5 verses 7 to 9 and we'll gain some uh, understanding about uh, Christ, uh, how he lived his days in the flesh. So can, can somebody please read Hebrews 5, 7 to 9, please? In the days of his humanity, he offered up both prayers and pleas with uh, loud crying and tears to the one able to save him can from Can you read a little loudly, please, and slowly? Thank and, you. And he was heard because of his devout, devout behavior. Although he was a son, he le learned obedience from the things which he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the source of eternal salvation for all those who obey him. Okay, so here, thank you. Uh, we see uh, his days in the flesh. There's numerous references uh, to the humanness of Christ, his days in the flesh in, uh, in, this, in these verses. So in verse 7, he says, he offered up prayers and supplications, which means Jesus prayed. Uh, he, with vehement cries and tears, uh, which means that uh, Jesus, uh, you know, uh, he wept. He was very human. He wept. Vehement means very fervent, uh, passionate, you know, intense prayer, uh, weeping. Uh, verse 8, uh, his godly fear, which means uh, he revered his father. He had great reverence towards God the Father. Um, was again he learned obedience which means jesus was taught by the father he learned to obey what his father told him was eight he suffered which means he experienced pain and anguish and was nine having been perfected which means jesus had to prove himself you know to be qualified as the author of our salvation and how do he have to prove himself through his obedience uh, being obeying his father in every way in 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 every area of his life and also submitting to the will of his father so we see that you know as uh, you know that jesus was fully human uh, it was demonstrated as he walked in total submission to the father and his he sets as an example for us to model okay um and uh, as Apostle Peter writes in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, uh, says that Christ in his suffering les left us an example that we should follow in his steps. Okay? And also, uh, he will, the man who will judge the world, Jesus would also come and he would also judge the world. Acts chapter 17, verses 30 to 31. Can somebody read that, please? Truly, these times of ignorance, God overlooked. But now commands all men everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. 
Thank you. So here we see that you know, Jesus came as a man uh, to reveal the Father heart of God, to manifest the glory of God, the nature of God and what he does. He also died on the cross as a, as a man. He came down so that we can receive salvation, but also know that the judgment of the world will be executed by the man. Okay, The judgment of the world will be executed by the man. Who is that man? Jesus Christ. It is interesting to note that um, the world will be judged by someone who actually lived and walked as one of the human race. Okay, So uh, Jesus, uh, who lived as a man, would also judge us as uh, you know he as a man who lived here. He will also judge us. So he will he knows us. He understands us, and he will judge us in that sense. Okay. So any questions anyone has? Yes, Francis. Please give Francis the mic. Before Francis uh, asks his question, uh, for the online students, uh, when can we have your uh, first assessment? Uh, chapters one to four. Any anyone has any? Date today is the twenty second. Can we have it on um, on a Friday? Can we can we have it on the third or uh, yeah third of March? Is that okay? Third of March is fine. Online students. Okay. Uh, you can please post 3rd of March whether we can have your first assessment, uh, online students, chapters 1 to chapter 4. Okay, uh, Jackin says, Pastor needs some clarity on this verse. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Learning obedience is for us humans because we do, do not and cannot understand the ways of God, but Jesus was fully God and fully man, how he learned. Yes, he was fully um, God, but as I said, he refrained from exercising his his uh, his nature. Uh, in that sense, he was fully God, um, a human, and as fully human, he needed to get his command and what he needed to do, where he needed to go, what he needed to speak from God the Father. So he was setting us an example and showing us that we. In every step of the way, we also need to depend on the uh, Father in everything that we uh, do. Did that help, Jackin? Sorry, I had to answer your question quickly, but um, I've uh, copied that and I would um, uh, maybe even address it next week when we meet because I'm we have to go to our next class. Okay, so. Is 3rd of March okay for the exam? I said 3rd March, right? 3rd or 10th. 3rd March is okay? Is 3rd March okay, online students? It's a Friday? Okay. Okay, so we'll have our first assessment on the 3rd of March. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining class. I'll answer, continue to answer Jackin's question, and maybe uh, we'll ask Francis' uh, question next um, next week, okay, and answer your question and those who have other questions. But please read and come prepared next week for our class. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining class. Have a good um, day. God bless. Thank you.